Hi, this is Mark with QuicksVenture.com. In this video, we're going to be replacing the main logic board in a 50-inch Panasonic plasma television. The TV in front of you is a few years old, purchased in 2007 from Costco. The TV itself works very well, except that both HDMI ports have stopped working. A little bit of research on the internet has shown that while not a common problem, it does happen often enough, and many people have had very good luck replacing the main system board. So, to get started, I need to put the TV flat on its face. I'm going to do that on the ottoman in front of it, and I've put down a couple of very soft blankets to make sure that we don't damage the screen. As you can see, the TV is now lying flat on its face on the ottoman. What we need to do next is to remove the casing on the back of the TV to expose the individual components. In order to do that, we need to remove every single screw from around the TV. In this case, there's probably close to 50 individual screws. Now, your TV may be slightly different, but if you're working on a Panasonic TH50PC77U, this is exactly what it's going to look like. And most Panasonic plasmas are going to be very similar. In fact, many TVs use interchangeable parts among models. So, like I said, most Panasonics are going to look this way. Uh, newer LED TVs are thinner, but the basic concepts are still going to apply. I'm going to take the camera back over to a wide angle, set up a time lapse, and we'll take the back off the TV. As you can see, the uh, metal cover on the back of the TV has been removed. Let's take a look at the components inside this plasma television. And keep in mind, plasma TVs, LCD TVs, they're going to have very similar components, but plasma TVs may have a few more because there's a few more electronics needed to make them work. The large brown component near the top, in this case, is the power supply. And those very large capacitors are holding a lot of electricity. And if you bridge a connection on them and they still have power, it can kill you. So, this is when we're going to talk about safety. Do not attempt this project if you're not comfortable working with electronics. And do not bridge connections on large capacitors. That being said, if you understand the risks, go ahead and take a look at the other components in your TV. In this plasma TV, there are lots of connectors going down the side, and these are uh, boards that distribute the picture to each quadrant of the plasma screen. Every single one of these green boards can fail independently of the others, and oftentimes when you have a problem with your TV that is picture related, where a section of the TV doesn't work, or the sound doesn't work, or particular inputs don't work, one of these boards is to blame. In our case, this is the main logic board, or also the signal input board. I've gone ahead and also removed the screws from this cover, or at least most of them, apparently. One left to go. So I'm going to remove that cover, and then I'll show you the logic board underneath. With the one last screw removed, I can pull off this cover to expose the entire logic board. And the cover shroud for the uh, antenna module. So this is the board that's causing all of our trouble. I couldn't see anything physically wrong with the board, but I know that uh, something in between the HDMI ports and the logic processor has failed. So what I've done is looked at the board very closely and found the model number. In this case, for this particular TV, the model number is TNPH0692. And for some reason, there are multiple versions of this board. It's called a suffix. Now, it's unclear to me if the suffix matters, but because certain retailers were offering to match the suffix, I went ahead and got the right one. If you look very closely, you can see some headers here with the letters AB, AC, AD, AE, AF, AG, and AH. And there's a resistor bridging the AF connection. So, in this case, it's a TNPH0692AF model. I went online and found a retailer selling a refurbished board, really just a recycled board. I have an old TV. And I have ordered that exact model, and it arrived yesterday. So I'm going to remove all the screws around this board, and I'm going to take off each individual connector, and then I'm going to replace the old logic board in my TV with the new, at least to me, board that arrived from the retailer. And then we're going to put the whole TV back together again and hope it works. So I'm going to set up another quick time lapse while we replace the board itself. One more quick piece. This is the new board, and we should make sure that it does match exactly to the old board. So if you look at the two, they are an exact 
uh, copy of each other. In fact, there may be subtle differences, but as long as the model number and the suffix match, and the basic layout is the same, and each connector is in exactly the same place, then you shouldn't have any trouble. So, now the board has been replaced. In theory, we're basically done. Now, it might be a good idea to test something right now, but I'm just going to go on faith and put everything back together again, and then we'll test it when we're done. So I'm going to put the camera back over at a wider angle, and we're going to reverse the process of putting all the screws back in, and then putting the cover back on the TV. And now the cover's back on and all of the individual screws are back in place. Except for one that I stripped uh, early on and have thrown away, but you know what? It happens. And I apologize for the camera falling. I've actually done that video twice now and both times the video has fallen in the middle of the time lapse so you couldn't see the whole thing. But it's really not that exciting anyway. It's just me putting screws in the back of the TV. So now I'm going to put the TV uh, back on its stand, plug in all of the connectors, including an HDMI connected Roku, and we're going to see if everything works now. Okay, we finished putting it back together again, set it up, and plugged it in. So now the real moment of truth. And I apologize that the camera slipped there at the end of the uh, last time lapse. Apparently, uh, you didn't get to see the last ten or so screws go in. But uh, here we go. I'm going to turn the TV on. I heard it click, so that's a good sound. I see the light turning on. And there you have it. So the TV works, or at least it went to uh, TV, but now the real question is, does the HDMI port work? And yes, it does. So there we go. That is how to repair a plasma or LCD TV. The process will be the same on almost every uh, flat panel device. They're all just a uh, panel with a whole bunch of electronics on the other side. You take the back off, you find out which component is broken, and you can usually figure out which component's broken by searching for your particular issue on the internet, and then uh, find the replacement board. Uh, for plasma TVs, anything logic related or connection related is going to be in your main board. If the screen itself is broken, then you're probably out of luck. And if you're having trouble with one particular area of the screen, there are different controllers for each side of the screen. So uh, do a little bit of research and then order the part. Make sure you get exactly the right part number. Buy it, take the back off, replace it, put it back together again, pray a little bit, turn it on, and there you go. This has been Mark with Quick's Venture. Thanks for watching.